Hey everyone, it is that time again. It is time for Power Hour. I'm excited to be here with you. Uh, We're going to have a powerful time in the Word of God today, and then I'm going to be praying for your prayer requests. So hold on to those thoughts for just a moment, and please go ahead and let me know where you are watching from uh, this afternoon, this evening, or whatever time zone it is where you are, and I'd love to be able to give you a shout out. One of the things I love so much about Power Hour is we literally have people from all over the world that are tuning in. And today, I'm going to be talking about a subject that's really dear to my heart that I know many of you have have lived through too, and that is the subject of fear, overcoming fear. This is huge. So we've got a a Kristen on here from Alabama. That's awesome. And we've got people joining in. Diana's on here. I imagine you're in Kansas, Diana, but I'm not entirely sure. New Mexico. uh, Stephanie is in Fort Worth. um, Sarah's in Chicago. Joy's in Sebastian, Florida. And uh, well, Christina's on here from Florida. We've got a happy, yes, happy resurrection. You know, it's Easter this Sunday. How exciting. Uh, we've got Tina from Canada. Uh, Krista's from North Carolina. So, you know, this would be a great time actually to go ahead and press share if you're watching on Facebook. Like and subscribe if you're on YouTube. We actually have a winner from last week. Now, last week we gave away a copy of All Is Not Lost, right? And this is, this is um, one of my latest books, and this has got a lot of testimony in here about my overcoming um, just a childhood abuse. So this would be powerful, but we've got a little moment here to join us because they might, they might miss it otherwise. So we are gonna be doing a giveaway today. Now, if you would like to enter to win the giveaway for today, The giveaway for today is this book, Fearless. Look at this product placement behind me. Look at that. How very clever. Um, We're going to be we're going to be talking about this, and I'm going to give this copy. I'm going to sign this copy. Maybe I'll get you a new one. This is my copy. It's a bit dog-eared, actually. You don't want my one, do you, really? But I'll get you um, I'll get you a fresh copy, and I'll sign it, and I'll send that to somebody that um, that shares. And you know, you press share on Facebook, like and subscribe if you're on YouTube, and then comment in the comment section that you have shared it, and then our team will go through and they'll pick somebody from those comments that has shared it and has put it in the comments. And then we'll announce that, and then we'll be, we'll be getting that on its way to you. So uh, it's exciting. Amarillo, Texas, Pennsylvania, John from Bakersfield, Linda from Spain, that's Ashley's mom. Hey, mom. And uh, so that's when Joan's on here from uh, Solihull in the UK. We were just in the UK, it was amazing. Uh, Shifi's on here from Toronto, Canada. We've got a few people on here from Canada today. We love our Canadian family up there. Uh, we, we are looking forward to coming back to Canada again at some point. Uh, Bevel is on here from California. Now, I'm hoping, let me get the name of this winner up here. Uh, the winner from last week. The winner from last week, and I'll remind you at the end as well. The winner from last week, da da da, drum roll please, is um, Michaela J. Michaela J from Northern California. You are the winner. Michaela of this book and so I'm going to sign it for you and get that sent out to you welcome well done Michaela if you'd like to win today's giveaway of copy of fearless you just got to share it and uh, comment and then we'll pick somebody amen we've got people joining from all over Uganda wow we've got people from Uganda that is so fun you know this morning actually we were just on the phone call on a conference call with our um, African um, director, Chipa Butai, and we are planning again another tour around um, Africa. We're going to be going to South Africa and Namibia, I believe, in the autumn time, in October, November time. So make sure you check out our events on the website because it will tell you where we're going to be next. Uh, but we do have a few upcoming things. Before we get into the teaching, let me tell you where we're going to be next. We are going to be going to, da, 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 let me find them on my note here, um, Orlando, Sanford, Florida um, on April the 20th. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, some special meetings there at Karis Bible College and that's open to the public. So you're going to want to come to that in the morning, Saturday of April 20th and then in the evening. Lake Haven Church in Eustis, Florida on the, on the Sunday the 21st. So on April 25th, 27th, many of you have already have already signed up. You've already secured your spot. You've already registered 
for our annual event, The Cure. Now, I am so excited about The Cure. It's gonna be happening here in Woodland Park, Colorado. And um, you know, you're not gonna to wanna to miss that. If you are from one of these far-flung countries a long way from America, it is gonna be live streamed for you. So you can watch it even if you're in Zambia, you're gonna be able to watch it, Clarion, as well. So, um, and Dublin, yes, all of those far-flung places. You can fly out if you want to, but if it's too far to come, it is gonna be live streamed. That is the cure. If you're planning on attending in person, I would suggest that you register, okay? Because we want to make sure that we plan. It's a free event, we just ask you to register so that we can make preparations for your arrival. Um, and then May 5th, we're gonna be at Overcomers Church in uh, Perryville, Missouri. And then July 9th to the 14th, we're gonna be at various places all around the East Coast. We're going to be doing Washington DC, uh, Maryland, Rhode Island, New York, and Massachusetts. So uh, we're gonna be all over the place. So make sure you check those things out on our website to find out if we're coming soon to a town near you. We've still got people joining from England, from Trinidad, from Ireland, I love it, Baltimore. Amen, Ava, we've been praying for the people of Baltimore. I know they're going through a really challenging time at the moment. Um, Irfan's on here as well, God bless you. So glad everyone's uh, on here with us today, amen. So today I'm gonna to be talking about this subject, uh, fearless, if you're just joining, fearless, fearless, fearless. This is something that's actually very close to my heart just because, you know, as I was growing up, the circumstances that um that was surrounding me as a child, you know, were very difficult. And because of that, there was just a lot of fear. Fear crept in on the inside of me. And I know that this is true for so many people. You know, we don't realize the, the impact that fear has on our life. And you know, the reason it's, it's so important is because we cannot operate in fear and faith at the same time. You know, bouncing back between the two of those things doesn't work very well. And when we are in, uh, well, I say, uh, operating, walking, talking in, in a realm of faith, we speak a different language. And you know, that, that faith, that trust, that confidence that we are designed confidence, which we call faith, and we put it in the words of somebody else, or in the lies of the enemy, or in our own ability, we open the door and, and just, it's almost like we leave that crack of the door open for fear to creep in. And fear is very sneaky. When we start listening to other people's opinions of us, even to the doctor's report, even to you know, things that are going on in the news around us, even to, from people that we love that maybe aren't um, speaking words of life, speaking words of faith, those words, those reports easily get, get down on the inside of us and they start to take root. And the more we meditate on those things, the more they become part of us, the more that we identify with, a, with the fear that surrounds them and they become a stronghold in our life. And you know, fear is so sneaky, it's subtle. I like to look at it this way. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are the temple of God. But yet sometimes fear tries to come knocking on our door. Sometimes it's a phone call, right? Some of us need to quit picking up the phone. I had a phone call the other day. Somebody, uh, somebody tried calling me and I knew that there was no, nothing good. And I just, I didn't even answer it. I just pressed, you know, delete, um, shut, my, shut my phone off. And I just decided, devil, I'm not gonna answer the phone from you. I'm not gonna receive what you have to share with me. I'm not, I'm not, not taking it on on the inside. I'm not receiving that report. Literally pressed the red button on, on the phone, said, go away, I'm not listening to you. You know, sometimes we gotta do that because fear if it can't get in the front door of our temple by, by using the doorbell or knocking on the door, it'll go around the back. It'll check the side access. It'll see if it can creep in through the cat flap through the back. You know, for the enemy to operate in our life, for him to have power over us, he needs us to buy into his lies. He needs us to buy into the fear that he's peddling. And when we refuse to do that, you know, we start to walk in trust and confidence and peace is a fruit of faith, whereas torment is a fruit of fear. So, you know, fear can come from natural things. And oftentimes, people, people confuse the fear of the Lord, as it's mentioned many times in scripture, 
um, with, the, the, with just everyday normal fear or the fear of the enemy, natural carnal fear. The fear of the Lord is a reverential kind of fear. It's awe and wonder. It's a reverence on the inside of us that is holy and, and appropriate because God is so magnificent and, and so powerful and so loving and so gracious, you know, so far beyond us as humans that, you know, we should be in awe and wonder and reverence of him. That is godly fear. But the fear I'm talking about today, it doesn't come from our spending time with the Lord. It comes from our spending time in the flesh and spending time listening and meditating on all the things of the enemy or just worldly things. And that starts to bear fruit in our life. You know, this this fear thing can become habitual. It's not who we were created to be. And I'm going to show you something. Where did fear creep in in the scripture? Where Where is the first instance that we're going to find of fear? So if you've got your Bible, uh, I want you to turn on over to Genesis chapter 3. Now, we were not created to be a people that fear. We were not created to have even a capacity for fear. In, in 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, it says that God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. How many of you know that fear will make people crazy? It literally makes them lose their mind. But God did not design us to to be that way. You know, when he created Adam and Eve way back there at the beginning of the world, he didn't create them with this capacity for fear. This fear crept in after the fall. And I'll show you something. This is Genesis um, chapter 3. Now it starts here. It says, The serpent was more subtle than any of the beasts of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God said that you should not eat of any tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, Serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but from the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said you will not eat of it, nor will you touch it, else you will die. Then the serpent said to the woman, Surely you will not die, for God knows that on that day you will eat of of it, and your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Well, first of all, Eve didn't actually have the, all of those instructions completely correct. You know, when we hear things secondhand, when we, she wasn't there when the instructions were given. They were given to Adam. When we hear things secondhand, rather than we have secondhand revelation, sometimes things can get twisted. If you've ever played a game of telephone, you know when you get people to line up, we used to do this at kids, or sit in the circle, and one person will whisper something into the ear of the person next to them, a phrase or a song or something, and then they will pass that information on and they'll whisper to the ear of the person next to them. By the time you've gone all the way around that circle, that you'll, you'll get them to speak out that message, and it's usually changed quite considerably from the first person that spoke it. This similar kind of thing happened with Eve. She didn't have first-hand revelation. And so it, by the time it came out of her mouth, she'd added to the instruction. And because of that, the serpent, the enemy in the body of a serpent, was there ready to sneak in. You see, we can't afford to have, especially if you're dealing with a lot of fear and anxiety and even the end stages of that, which is depression, we cannot afford to have secondhand revelation because it's first-hand relationship with God that gives us revelation. That revelation is something that will light the fire of faith on the inside of you. It is super, super powerful. So here, the serpent, he took advantage of Eve. And he jumped in here and he said to her, the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die for God knows that on that day um, that you eat of it, your eyes are going to be opened and you will be like God. Now here comes the problem. You see, Eve was already like God. She was created in his image. God created them. He said, let us make man in our image, in our image, let us create them. And when God made mankind out of everything that God created, he said that those things were good. When he saw man, he said, oh, they're very good, very good. You see, Eve and Adam were made in the very image of God. They were given his character and his nature. They were given his name and his authority. They were given a job to do on earth, and that is to subdue and to multiply to subdue the things of earth, to subdue every creature that's on the earth and to go forth and multiply. Because everything that God touches multiplies. It gives life, it grows, it develops. But everything the enemy does, he divides and he separates. You know, so when when Adam and Eve, I believe this, when Adam and Eve were created, you know, 
it's almost like Lucifer was there in the garden and he, he could see all of these creations that God was putting together. But he didn't really get bent out of shape until Adam and Eve were created. When God said, let us make them in our image, that just sent him over the edge. You know, Lucifer was the worship leader of the angels, the worship leader of heaven. And he liked a little bit too much having all of the, all of the attention upon him. But when God made something that was garden to sneak in and separate um, Adam and Eve from God himself. He had to intervene. He couldn't allow that to slide. Such was the evil that was propagating in his heart. But in order for the enemy to have any authority on this earth, remember fear is a fruit of the enemy. Fear and torment are his characteristics. For him to be able to operate in any kind of power, he'd need to convince Adam and Eve to put more trust more confidence in his words than in the very words of God, their father, their creator. Now, you might think, well, you know, this is, this is really obvious. How come they didn't see this attack? Well, it says the serpent was subtle, more subtle than any of the beasts of the field which the Lord God had made. They had never encountered this kind of deception. They had never encountered this kind of situation before. So their defenses were, were not up. They had, no, they had no experience to go upon. They'd never come across such ideas before. But when the serpent came to Eve, and knowledge, he knew he had an opportunity there Um, the first incidents of fear is recorded in the Bible if you're just joining us today. It says the woman saw, in, I'm, I'm here in verse 6, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise, you see she bought the lie that if she ate of the, of the fruit of the tree, she would become like God. She was already like God. She didn't need to eat of the fruit of the tree to become like God. She was made in his very image, but she listened more to the lies of the serpent. You need to do something to be better. You're not enough as you are. Doesn't that just sound like some of the roots of fear that we listen to sometimes today? That you're not good enough, that you're not smart enough, that you, you, you just can't do it, you're not strong enough, you don't have enough faith, you just don't believe right, what kind of Christian are you? Those words that make you think like you are less than something come straight from the enemy. And they are a breeding ground from fear, a breeding ground for fear. But she listened to the lies of the serpent and she so she took the tree, she took the fruit, and it said in verse 7, then the eyes of both were opened and they knew that they were naked. So now they're trying to hide things. They, cut, they sew together fig leaves um, to make coverings for themselves. I think honestly, this is why one of the reasons why Jesus cursed the fig tree over there in the Gospels. He had an issue with fig trees. It wasn't an apple that they ate. It was figs. It says, then they heard the sound of God walking in the garden. You see, even after they had made this grave error, even after they had put more confidence, more trust in the lies of the enemy than the words of God, God still fellowship with them. God has not separated, did not separate himself from Adam and Eve. Yeah, their eyes were entered into the world, but God never broke fellowship with them. And I want you to know, you don't have to be afraid of your mistakes. You don't have to be afraid of your past errors, your failures. You don't have to be afraid of your future. You don't have to be afraid of even consequences in this world. Yeah, there's going to be natural consequences to sin in this world. But we don't have to be afraid of those because God is still with us. Even in the middle of your mess, even in the middle of your mistakes, the Lord is still with you. He's still fellowshipping with you. He still wants relationship with you. Amen. It's the lie of the enemy that tries to separate made too many mistakes, you are too sinful, you know, you've, God doesn't love you, it's all a lie. And here's the truth, he needs you to buy into his lies in order to breed fear in your life and rob you of the power of God flowing through you. He needs you to put more respect, more trust, more confidence in what he tells you than what God tells you in order for him to have influence in your life. So it says here, 
that Adam and Eve, you know, they sewed the, they sewed this, the leaves together and covered themselves because they knew that they were naked. You know, God doesn't, uh, doesn't want us to cover sin. We don't need to cover sin. When we mess up, when we sin, and when we confess our sin, you know what's happening there? It isn't the first time that, w- that God finds out about our mistakes when we confess them. That's not the first time that God finds out that you've done something wrong when you go to God in prayer and, and ask for his, his forgiveness. No, he's already forgiven you. But when we confess our sins one to another, when we confess our sins to God, what we're doing is we're shutting the door to the power of the enemy because the enemy operates in darkness. He wants you to, 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 to be in shame. Shame entered in right here. You know, they're walking with God in the garden. In verse 10, it says, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. That is the first incidence of fear creeping into the garden. You know, fear and shame are very closely linked together. The, the enemy is the accuser of the brethren. He wants to shame you. He wants to make you feel like you are this big, that you are less than good enough, that you are completely inadequate. He wants to try and bring up all of your past mistakes and project into your future so he can um, literally paralyze you with torment and stop you from speaking the words of God, from operating in the power of God, from allowing the miracles of God to flow through you. You know, he does this with deception. I'm convinced that fear entered into the garden right there because it was nothing more than misplaced faith. The faith that they were supposed to have, the trust and they were confidence that they were supposed to have in the very word of God, they took that faith, that confidence, and they moved it over and they placed more trust and more confidence and more faith in the report of a snake than they did in the, in the God, their creator. And when they did that, when they misplaced their faith, and put more faith in the devil, fear was born. Fear is nothing but misplaced faith. Man, we do not need to be listening to the lies of the enemy. You know, fear can come from all all different roots. Ultimately, the root of fear and torment comes from the enemy, but fear can be a natural thing. It can come from our previous experiences. It can can come from um, words that people have said. Um, You know, some, some fear is completely irrational. When I was a little girl, I was absolutely terrified of escalators because I'd had a, a, a negative experience. When I was about five years old, I remember being in a department store. And it was one of those department stores like in the mall where they have multiple levels and they have escalators connecting the different, the different shopping levels. And I remember my, being there with my, my mom and she was looking at some clothing racks and different things. And she she told me, you know, don't play around the top of the escalators. And... Um, I think I got bored and she probably wasn't, wasn't paying attention. She was looking at something else in a different direction. And I remember knowing that I shouldn't step on the steps because this escalator was going down. But I wanted to, I was fascinated by the moving handrails, how they, how they just bend around and, and snake all the way down the steps. And so I held on to the handrail. And I started to watch my hand move on the handrail of the escalator and very soon I didn't realize and I didn't think to let go because it happened so fast that my hand on the handrail was leading me down head first down my escalator. I landed up on the bottom of that escalator with lots of bumps and scrapes and bruises. But the thing that, you know, and that it wasn't terrible, I didn't break any bones or anything, but that fear of escalators was with me for decades. And it really wasn't until I was in my 20s I mean, I would literally, I would avoid at all costs ever going on an escalator again because that fear, it wasn't just, to me, it wasn't just a one-time event. The fear on the inside of that, remembering that painful, uh, that, that scary moment in my life took up a stronghold on the inside of me. It became to be, it came to be part of who I was and it started very slowly to change my behaviors. So when we were out and about traveling, moving through different places, I would do anything I could to avoid going on an escalator. If I stood on an escalator, I'd come out in a cold sweat, I'd be shaking, I mean, it was bad, you know? It was irrational, and I knew that it was irrational. I knew that it wasn't based on, really on, you know, I'm a grown-up now, I'm not five years old anymore. My logical brain had been over and over that instant many times. I felt confident that, you know, as an adult, I knew how to stand on a step and hold on to a root, a strong 
happens. Sometimes our fear, right? We should have a healthy fear when we cross the road. We should, we should look both ways, right? We should have a healthy respect for things. But you know, if you go away and you start dreaming about crossing the road and you start dreaming about wild animals attacking you, you know, that, that fear has gone beyond what is logical. It has started to take up a stronghold on the inside of you. And it wasn't until I was in my 20s, traveling all over Europe and this, I'm with a team. It's not practical for me to always find a, a lift or a, a, an elevator somewhere. So the Lord showed me, you know, you have authority over fear. It's real, it's there, you don't pretend like it doesn't exist. It happened because of a negative experience. But you know, we still have power over fear. And there are some keys that I wanna go through today that are gonna help you. We can begin to identify fear in our life. And once we've identified that stronghold of fear, we can speak to it and we can take authority over it. Remember, Adam and Eve still had authority. They just didn't know they had authority. They, they, they started to give it away to the enemy. We have authority. You know, when Jesus died and rose again, he restored the authority that Adam and Eve gave away to the enemy and he restored it to us. You know, this, this coming weekend is Easter Sunday and we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the resur resurrection from the grave. You see, if Jesus hadn't risen from the grave, then we would have nothing to celebrate. Our faith would be dead, but our faith isn't dead. It's in a living savior. And that living savior means that we have that power and that authority, that salvation and the fruits of that salvation belong to us, including a spirit, not of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You know, this is such an important thing. People can fear all different kinds of things and it'll affect them in all kinds of different ways. But there is an antidote. There's an antidote to fear. And that is found in 1 John verses 17 and 18. It says that perfect love has cast out fear. In fact, let us go on over there. I think that this is, this is a really powerful scripture to, um, to actually, I want you to see this for yourself. You know, it's not good enough to just to hear scripture. We need to know uh, where to find them, how to pull them out for ourselves, because this is the weapons of our warfare. Look at this. In verse 17, it says, Love has been perfected amongst us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. This means just as Jesus is, so are we in this world. When we've received Jesus on the inside of us, we can have boldness, we can have confidence, we can be fearless in this world. We don't have to fear the judgment of God because we've received Jesus, the payment for our sin. There is no lie the enemy that can prosper against us when we know that we are children of the Lord God Most High. When we've received Jesus on the inside of us, look at this, it gives us confidence. Boldness comes from faith, but torment and timidity and anxiety come from fear, come from the enemy. Look at this in verse 18. There is no fear, no fear in love. That's the love of God for us. But perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. You see, we were never created with a capacity for fear. We were only created with a capacity for love. But being part of a fallen world perverted that. And it says, we loved him because he first loved us. The antidote for fear is understanding that we are loved. It's understanding that we are children of the Most High God. That, there, that, that God, there, there, there is nothing that can separate us. Romans 8 talks about this. There is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. Not principalities, not powers, not, not things in the dark. There's nothing. Nothing in the past, nothing in the future can separate you from the love of God. And it is that love that we allow, that we receive by faith, that literally drives out the fear of the enemy or really anything else, the fear of things in this world, natural, carnal, um, illogical fears, irrational fears. The love of God will drive those out. So when the Lord showed me this over my fear of escalators, I'm like, all right, Lord, you told me I have authority over fear. You know, fear has many feelings associated 
You know, if you were to um, go and watch a movie, and I do not recommend watching scary movies because I do not recommend using um, fear as entertainment. You know, you have different parts of your brain, and while your brain, one part of your brain may say, this is only a movie, these are only actors, this isn't real, there's another part of you that doesn't know the difference. And it'll have physiological effects. That's why if you're watching a scary movie, you know, you get the pillow and you put it over your face like this and you kind of hide behind it. You know, and then what happens when you stop watching that scary movie and you leave the movie theater or you turn off the TV or whatever, you know, it changes your behavior. You start to lock all the doors. You start to turn on the lights. You start to check under the bed and check the windows, make sure everything's shut up. Make sure there's not a boogeyman in your closet, right? You, because you start to identify, even though your logical brain is telling you, these are actors, they got paid very well, no one was actually hurt in the making of this movie, they all went home and they went to bed and they were safe. You know, there's a part of you that starts to identify with what you've seen. It starts to identify with the perception of fear. That fear is sneaky and it starts to get on the inside of you to where it plays on your mind. It plays in your imagination. life to where it starts playing out in your life. You start to identify with the person in the movie that was being chased down the, the street, right? That's why your heart starts beating a little fast. That's why adrenaline starts running around your body because your body doesn't know the difference. Your physical body is relating to what you have put in front of it through your eyes and it starts to respond in the same way some of the person being attacked or chased or hunted is, is responding. You start to physi physiologically relate to what you're seeing. That is what fear does. And you know, that is what the enemy does. And if he can't get you to watch something you shouldn't be watching, he'll get you to listen to something that any way that he can get his words and his lies and his, he gets you to buy into his words, he'll do it. He needs to get those things on the inside of you. So by passivity, you start to agree with them. You see, you know, weeds don't start to grow in the garden because we planted them. They just grow. You know, we do not have to go on out there and say, I think I'm going to plant some weeds in my yard today. I have noticed something that weeds grow because I do nothing. And this is the same with fear. Fear starts to have power over us, not because we have um, necessarily even entertained it, not because we've necessarily bought into it con on a conscious level. But often fear grows in our life because we're passive because we're not pursuing um, actively the things of God and guarding our heart against the enemy. He is so subtle. Those weeds of fear will grow in our heart if we just leave it unattended. We have to literally um, li garden, uh, take those weeds out of our heart. And we do that with the Word of God. You know, the Word of God is a powerful truth that sets us free. In fact, it's the only truth that sets us free. You know, I want to show you something here. Let's go on over to 2 Corinthians. This is a great scripture. It talks about this a little bit in 2 Corinthians 10 and um, verse 3. It says, um, for we walk in the flesh. And I'm, I'm reading here in, in verse uh, uh, 3 here. It says, for we walk in the flesh. We do not, though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk according to the flesh. We're in the flesh. We have a flesh suit, right? For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You know, a stronghold is like a fortified castle. That's what it is. Fear will come in small and brick by brick, it'll build up walls in our life to separate us, to become fortified, to become rooted and grounded until it can get us to act out of fear, speak out of fear, make decisions out of fear. It, but it starts brick at a time. It says, to the casting down of imaginations, some translations say arguments, and the every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge in the garden. He came with knowledge that exalted itself against the words of God. He said, the word of God, you know, that you didn't hear that right. You didn't hear it right. That wasn't exactly the truth. I've got the new revelation. You need to listen to my revelation. My revelation really is the word of God. Doesn't that just sound like some of the things we hear today? When someone comes and says, oh, but you haven't heard, you know, this is the new revelation. And any, any organization that takes the word of God 
and tries to add something to it. Any organization that calls itself a religion, that calls itself a faith, that takes Jesus and says that Jesus is not enough, you've got to have Jesus plus these other things, Jesus plus these works, Jesus plus in order to, to, uh, to receive him, to be good enough, that's called a cult. Any, any organization that takes Jesus and adds lots of terms and conditions that go beyond the word of God, those are those things that we, that we see here in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 um, that the, we're supposed to pull down. Every high thing that exalts itself. What high things exalt themselves? Well, pride. Pride exalts itself. Pride says, you know, there's, there's some extra things that you have to do. Pride says, I know best. Pride wants all of the attention. Pride is a fruit of the enemy. That's what was Lucifer's downfall. And it's propagator, it's baby. If pride had a baby, it would be called shame. That's what it is. Shame is a, is a baby, an offspring of, um, of pride. And fear and pride and shame, they all go together. We don't want to buy into those things. It says, but our weapons of our warfare are mighty, not carnal. For the pulling down, you know, we are, we are it's captive taking a hold of our imaginations, taking a hold of our, our thought life and literally bringing it into the obedience, the captivity of Christ. You know, I like to do this. I like to measure my thoughts up to what I call the John 10.10 10 rule. John 10.10 10 is a, a foundational scripture in our ministry. It's a thief that comes to kill, steal and destroy. But Jesus came to give us life and life abundantly. You know, when I have a thought, maybe it's a recurring thought. Maybe it's a, a doubt or a fear or something that makes me feel anxious when I meditate upon it. What I do is I literally isolate that thought. I'll stare it down and say, where does that thought come from? What's the origin of that thought? And when I trace it back, I think, does it come, does it match up to the John 10, 10 rule? Does it come to kill, steal and destroy? Or does it come to give us life and life more abundantly? If it comes to kill, steal and destroy and bear more hallmarks in my life of anxiety or shame or pride or any of those things, I know that it's come from the enemy and I have authority over those things. But if it's bringing, as the more I meditate on it, if it's bringing me life and life more abundantly and it's leading me to love God and run into the arms of God more and more and dream the dreams of God and think the thoughts of God and speak the words of God, then I know it's, it's come from the Lord, right? And I'll meditate, I'll press in on that one. I'll confess that one. I'll write that one out on scripture, scripture cards and, and post it on the wall. We need to become people that are disciplined to train our thoughts. You know, our thoughts are like those weeds in the yard. You know, they, they'll come in and they'll go out. They'll come in and they'll go out. But we can't be passive allowing our thoughts to just meditate on anything, right? We must take the obedience of Christ if we just shut down this fear trap. You know, I remember one time I was, in, um, I was on a mission trip in Russia and we were having a pastor's conference and people were traveling from literally all over the, the continent to be there, days and days, and I trained some of them. And this was the night before the conference, and the lead, one of the leaders that I was with had a three-month-old baby. And the area that we were ministering in, the villages, we were in the villages, uh, was steeped in witchcraft. And they heard that the Christians were coming into town. And these, you know, we stirred up all kinds of, rightly so, all kinds of demonic forces that were going on. Good, I like upsetting the enemy. And, um, and you know, they'd been, um, you know, chanting and doing all their spells and sacrifices and things, you know, it's bringing evil and things like that in their, in their houses and different things. And, you know, it was very strange because we were going to have having a healing conference, but we noticed that people started randomly getting really sick in our team with different things. And we were really on guard and speaking against those things, not knowing all of the witchcraft and the things that they were up to. But one night, the, the night before the conference, I went to my room and I went to bed. And um, in the middle of the night, I was woken up by a knocking on my door. And it was somebody came to get me because uh, my co-leader, her baby was screaming and screaming and screaming and just would not settle down. And this is normally, you know, babies get fussy, but this was a really kind of calm baby, really settled baby. Normally it was out of character. And so I went to her room and she's sitting on the bed holding the baby. And as soon as I walked into that room, I felt something. 
I felt like this wasn't a, no, a normal something. This wasn't like colic or something. This, you know, it, this child was being tormented. And what came up in my spirit was to read Psalm 91. So I had my Bible with me and I just started to read Psalm 91 right out loud in the middle of that room there as the baby was screaming. And it says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the mighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. The Lord God is my stronghold. He is my castle, right? My God in whom I trust. My trust isn't in the circumstances. My trust isn't in the physical appearance. My trust isn't in a diagnosis or a person. My trust, my stronghold, my place of armed defense is in my Lord God. And I'm going to say that out loud. This is such a powerful um, um Psalm, it says here, surely, surely, that means with certainty, with it means doubtless, right? He shall deliver you from the snare of the, the hunter. That is a hidden trap. If the enemy has laid hidden traps, if he's spoken and used witchcraft against you, if he's, if he's used your own thoughts against you, your own imaginations against you, right? The Lord will deliver you from the hidden trap of the lies of the enemy, but maybe that we have bought into. And he shall deliver you from the deadly pestilence. And he shall cover you. You know, you're covered. You don't need to be exposed. You don't need to try and hide and, and, and sew fig leaves together to hide your shame, your nakedness. He says, he shall cover you with his feathers and under... His faithfulness shall be your wall, your shield and your wall. You shall not be afraid by the terror by night or the arrow that flies in the day. You know, we do not need to be afraid. When we see signs of the times, when we need to see signs in the atmosphere, when we see, you know, some people are freaking out because we're having an eclipse here in America. I'm like, for goodness sake. We do not need to be afraid of things that we see during the night or during the day. We have got the Lord is our protector. He is our armed defense. Amen. We do not need to be afraid of the economy tanking. He is our provider. He is our supply. We do not need to be afraid of death itself because death has lost its sting. We do not to be afraid, need to be afraid of mankind because the word says, what can man do to me? God is my helper. He is my armed defense. He says, not the pestilence that pursues in darkness or, or destruction that strikes at noonday. A thousand may fall by your side, 10,000 by your right hand, but it's not going to come near you. You know, this was very real during COVID when it started talking about plagues, right? Pestilence. Your eyes, may, uh, may shall, you shall behold and see the reward of the wicked, but you, because you have made the Lord God, who is your refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. He says, there shall be... No evil before you, neither shall any plague come near your tent. Your tent is your physical body as well as your residence. You are the temple of the Most High God. You're covered. You're covered. He says they shall bear you up. Look at this. He shall give his angels charge over you to guard you in all of your ways, and they shall bear you up in their hands. God sends angels to surround you, to protect you. Lest you strike your foot against a stone, you shall tread upon the lion and the adder. Look at this. This is, this is talking, this is referring to things in the garden. The lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. You know, you're, the, the enemy is under your foot. Fear is under your foot. It to live in fear or to be servants to it. We are created. power and of love and of a sound mind. Look at this. This is where I want to get to. Verse 14. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. Now God is speaking. He's speaking back. And God is saying, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. 
I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. This is what God is saying to you today. I'm going to be with you in trouble. I'm going to deliver you and honor you. I'm going to, with long life, I will show him, I will satisfy him, provide for him and show him my salvation. Now there's a lot in this. There's two different words here that are used the word for deliver. One is palat and one is halas and they mean different things. When it says, I will be with him in trouble, that means anxiety or distress or tribulation. When you're vexed in some way, it says, I will deliver him. That is halas. And that means I will rescue him with armed defense. I will rescue him. God says, I'm going to rescue you with an armed defense. When you're afraid and you call upon the Lord, the minute that you call upon the Lord, he sends his angels to surround you with you are when it says in verse 14 i'm going to deliver him again that is a palat and that means to carry off to safety to find a way of escape god will pick you up he will pluck you out of the middle of the furnace and he will show you the way of escape the moment that you call upon him so if you find yourself today in a in a moment of distress in a moment of fear and of anxiety don't dwell upon that you start speaking back to it You know, I had to speak back to that fear of escalators. I had to say, escalators, I will not be afraid of you. I will not be afraid of you. I've got the the protection of the Lord on my side. And as you know, just like it said at the beginning of that psalm, I will say of the Lord. We have to say of the Lord, you are my armed defense. You will satisfy me. You are my protection. You are my provision. You under under your wings, I hide. You know, these are things that need to come out of our mouth. And that is how we start to take captive our thoughts. I read this very psalm in that situation. And that child stopped crying, whatever it was that was tormenting. You know, he just went straight to sleep, having been tormented for, for a long time, for hours. And so I went back to my own room. The baby went to sleep and I went back to my own room. And as I went back to my own room and I shut the door, I felt in that room like there was something in that room that wasn't in that room before. It was a coldness. It's like the room felt colder than it did before. The darkness felt darker than it did before. And as I laid down in my bed and I pulled my cover, you know what? We don't need to be afraid of the dark. We don't need to be afraid of the cold, right? God is going to take care of us. But fear started to creep up. I started to feel adrenaline running through my body. I started to feel all of the physiological Uh, emotions feelings in my flesh of of fear and I asked the Lord I'm like Lord why am I feeling afraid where did this come from and the Lord said to me oh don't worry it's just a demon and it just kind of hit me and as I looked at the end of my bed even though it was very dark there was a patch of darkness an outline that was much darker than the rest of it there was a manifestation of the enemy right there in my room and sometimes we don't realize these, these, these things happen in this world today. But you know, I just started to, to hear what the Lord said to me. Don't worry, it's just a demon. So out of my mouth, I started to repeat what I just heard the Lord say. And the moment that I said that, warmth started to come back into that room and the darkness started to lift. I laid down, pulled my covers over me and I went to sleep. The next day I woke up, we did the conference and it was one of the most powerful healing events I've ever man- ever seen, ever witnessed. Everyone gets healed. I mean, it, w- it was phenomenal. But you know, there was a temptation there to buy into the lies of the enemy. He needed me to buy into the fear. He needed me through even a physical manifestation of evil to become more afraid of him and what he was trying to do and shipwreck all of the plans of God for the following day. You know, everything that that God had for those people, the enemy was trying to circumvent it. But sometimes the most powerful thing that we can do is just say the, the same thing that the Lord says to us. Say the, speak the word of God, speak the same things over our situation that God says about our situation. Don't worry. Oh, it's just the demon. That's it. 
You know, God is, is, is there to, to back up our words. He's willing, he needs you to speak words of life, speak words of faith, to punish the darkness, to drive out fear. His perfect love in you is more than enough when it comes out of your mouth to drive out fear. Our biggest challenge here today is taking captive our thoughts and bringing in them into the obedience of Christ because the moment that we do that, fear doesn't have a leg to stand on. You know, and, and different things in our life um, have a different amount of a fear attached to them. People are often more afraid of a cancer than they are of a cold. Yet it's exactly the same words of life and power that kill a cancer that will kill a cold. Exactly the same. We don't need to be afraid of things in this world because greater is he who is with us than he that is in the world. Right? This is a, this is a powerful thing. Karen's on here. She's saying, I wish I knew... Um, what she just said, my daughter sees demons. Well, Karen, let me just say this again. You speak nothing. You are nothing. And then you ignore them and you go to sleep, right? We do not have to be afraid of the things of the enemy. We just need to speak back to them because passivity, the enemy takes as permission. Some of us have been wrecked with fear our whole life. It has come in, crept in, and brick by brick started building up a fortress on the inside of our heart. Well, you know what? Brick by brick, we can take it down. We can take it down. We do not have to live with a fortress of fear on the inside of us. So, But it, it's going to take persistence. Because you know what? Passivity allowed those things to manifest, allowed those things to take down roots. But every time those thoughts of fear, every time those images, every time those, those words in our head start playing out, that record starts playing out in our head, we've got to take those thoughts captive and say, no, I know where you come from. I will not be afraid of you. I have perfect, the perfect love of God on the inside of us. And you know, one of the most powerful things for me was as I started to focus on who God says that I am, you know, we have confession cards for that. You can get them from our ministry and our, our identity confession card. As I started to meditate on the things that God said about me, boldness and faith, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, started to get down and paint a new picture on the inside of me. And I'm telling you, it wasn't even very long before I didn't rebuke fear anymore. All I had to do was walk out who God says I was. Those things, you know, when we start to put more confidence and more faith in the word of God than we do the word of the world or our own experience, I'm telling you, fear doesn't have a hospitable place to dwell anymore. Fear is going gonna, is gonna to stop knocking on the door of your temple and try, you know, someone next door. He's gonna, he's, you know, the enemy is not, he's not very persistent. And if we outlast him and if we do not quit, we will win. We will win, amen? And the same thing happens when it comes to sickness and disease, mental torment, all of those things. You know, it's exactly the same process. Fear has to bow its knee. It has to bow its knee to the name of Jesus. And, then, and the enemy, the author of fear, will be made to pay for every lie, every whisper of torment he has tried to keep you captive with. So right now, I'm gonna, I want to pray for people because I know there are many people on here that anxiety has play, played a big part even in your physical sickness. Sometimes we do not realize how much that um, our mental health affects our physical health. You know, um, I'm talking today about this book, Fearless. You can get a copy of this, and we're going to give a copy of this um, to people that share, press share on this live stream or like and subscribe if they're on YouTube, and then put it in the comments that they have shared it. If you would like to win one, a signed copy of this, and enter that um, to, to be part of that drawing, you need to press share and comment that you've done. Just comment shared in the comments there, okay? But, you know, we do not realize how much our mental health and our physical health are connected. Many of us have lived life. I know for me, I collected diseases. That was my confession. You know, it's a terrible confession that my name is Carla, I collect diseases. Literally, throughout my, my um, growing up years, I heard people say, oh, Carly always catches. You know, she's always sick. She just catches everything that's going around. And not knowing the power of my words, buying into that lies, it became a stronghold on the inside of me. And I started to repeat it. And everything, you know. And, and so sure enough, I was always sick. powerful um, opener for the enemy to come on in. My heart had become fertile for his lies and he started to propagate them. And before I knew it, I had multiple different diseases, different things that were wrong, were wrong with me. 
You know, we don't just wake up one day and find that we've got a whole long list of things wrong with us. Sometimes because of ignorance, because we don't know any better, or just because we've been passive, that we, you know, bit by bit, we get a new diagnosis and a new diagnosis and a new diagnosis. In fact, I think, I'm, I think probably my next book is gonna be Overcoming Chronic Sickness because it does something different on the inside of a person. But here's the thing, we don't have to live like that. That may have been our history, but it doesn't need to be our future. We can change that. We can start identifying those, those patterns of wrong thinking, those patterns where lies have, of, of fear have crept in and started taking root. And we can systematically break them down with, our, with words of faith, with words of life and peace. You can be free from the habit of fear today. So right now, if, you, if, this, is, if this has really rung a bell on the inside of you, just stretch out your hand to scream because I want to pray for you. Father God, I thank you for my brothers and sisters. I thank you, Lord, for everyone that is listening to the sound of my voice. And in Jesus' name, I take authority over the lies of the enemy and fear. And we command you to stop in Jesus' name. We command that perfect love to, be, to cast out fear right now. And the peace that surpasses all understanding to fill your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Lord, I thank you that your perfect love working on the inside of us is, is, is pushing out the darkness. We cut off the root of fear, the stronghold of fear we, and, and shame and pride right now. We take you captive in the name of Jesus. We bind you enemy in Jesus' name and we command you to leave our thinking, to leave our thought life right now. Peace reigns, that it rules in our body. Right now, receive the peace of God that surpasses all understanding that fills your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Lord, I thank you that your peace, that fruit of faith, is a far greater power on the inside of us than any lies of the enemy. And in Jesus' name, we take authority over all sickness and all disease right now. We command those disease processes in the body to leave. We arrest you, enemy, from operating in our bodies and we command you to leave. Thank you. There's somebody on here, you have been dealing with pain and in your nerves. It runs all through your body. It's all sometimes. Right now, I speak the peace of God over you. Be at rest right now in Jesus' name. I come against all bacteria, all infection, all, all um, there's, there's fungus even, there's candida. Right now, we, can, we curse you in Jesus' name and we command you to leave. Somebody needs to declare this. I am a germ graveyard. My body is a germ graveyard. It is where germs come to die. When germs touch my body, they die on contact. They die on contact. Thank you, Lord. Now, there are people that have been tormented in their sleep even. Right now, I feel like there's somebody, you have woken up in the night feeling like you are being strangled. Right now, we command peace in your household. We command the enemy out of your airspace in Jesus' name. We place a hedge of protection around you. I thank you, Lord, that as you sleep tonight, you'll have sweet sleep, restful sleep in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Katie, right now we just speak to John and we command that stage four colon and liver cancer to leave his body, to leave his lungs in Jesus' name. Every lying cancer cell, we curse you at the root. We command you to shrivel up and die. Thank you, Lord. There is somebody, you have a crumbling of your bones. I think this is like an osteoporosis and you've had fractures and literally bones that have worn away on the edges and have just become frail and, and, and crumbling. I see um, uh, bones in the neck crunching down on top of one another. Right now, we command those bones to become strong. I speak bone density back into you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We command eyes to see and ears to hear right now. Thank you, Lord. You know, we have some testimonies on here. I feel like, you know, this is a good time to read some of these because um, I'm, I'm specifically, I've got a word right now for somebody that has a hernia. You have a hernia um, and it's, uh, it's right down lower, not in your chest area, but down lower in your abdomen. Right now, push on that and come on. We command that to go back in, in Jesus' name. The stomach wall, go back in, in Jesus' name. 
Thank you, little kid. Somebody's had a problem. Um, it was you've had abdominal surgery, uh, some an incision through your abdomen, and um, it's healed. But like, it's like the nerves do not connect properly. You have nerves that don't connect anymore. There's dead spots for people that have dead spots um, to do with the nerves, and maybe something. Maybe this is a result of some surgery that wasn't quite successful but right now we command those dead spots to come back to life in Jesus name come back to life thank you Lord somebody has had a jaw wiring I see uh, metal wires that have been put into bones and joints to literally bind them back together and put them into place right now we command healing into those we command that metal to, to dissolve and that joint and that bone to be back into place in Jesus name correct alignment Thank you. Somebody doesn't have an... Um, right now, we just command that skeletal system to come into alignment, straighten up hips, pelvis, shoulders, knees, ankles, be aligned in Jesus' name. Legs grow to the same length in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Robin says they have nerves, bilateral arms, dead symptoms from medical procedures. Right now, that's for you, Robin. We command that, those nerves to come back to life in Jesus' name. Mercy, we command that hernia to be sucked back into place. Kirara Basina, Princess Kima, right now, I re she's, they receive healing, amen, from nerve problems from the surgery that you had. That's right. I believe with you right now, we command those nerves to come back to life in Jesus' name. Somebody has a severe pain in their lower back on the left side. Right now, we command that pain to leave. We command that pain to leave in Jesus' name. We command that, those muscles to loosen up. And to, and to be at rest, full uh, twisting ability come back to you. Kirara, somebody, you've actually got heat in your body right now. You can feel it. That's because the Lord is healing you. He's healing you. Thank you, Lord. There's somebody with a, with a growth on a pituitary gland. Um, right now, we command your wholeness and health over your pituitary gland in Jesus' name. We command that to, to, to be free from cysts. Cysts leave right now. Uh, I think it's like a pineal cyst or pineal cyst right now. Uh, it's on the pituitary gland, deep in the brain. There's, a, there's a, a small cyst in the brain that is causing a problem. Right now, we command that to be dissolved in Jesus' name. Somebody has, um, you have had a drainage, a shunt put into your brain because of hydrocephalus. Right now, we command that, that fluid to stop being produced, extra fluid to stop being produced in the name of Jesus. Those headaches to leave you. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And um, there is nodules. Somebody has, has this word in their in their medical. I'm reading your medical. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's connective tissue disorders. The Lord's correcting those for you right now. He's bringing blood pressure to a normal, stable level. Thank you, Lord. We command lungs to open up. Seth, we command your daughter's lungs to open up. Breathe freely. Thank you, Lord. Cystic fibrosis, leave right now. Thank you, Lord. Leave right now. Somebody has a, a, Megan says they feel heat and the legs are twitching. That's right. That's because God is healing you in that area. Thank you, Lord. Robin says somebody has an inoperable, it's gone. It's something to do with the pituitary gland, but right there, that was for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for healing people. There's, there's, there's things that are going on deep inside the body that people can't even see on the outside. The Lord is is removing impurities from you. Somebody's had an issue with um, um, calcium and heavy metal deposits that have been caught up in joints and different places, even in the brain. Um, toxins that are that are that are not being eradicated with your body from your body. Mercy, and uh, that's true. No more mo nodules in the lungs. Right now, if you've got issues with toxins not being eradicated from the body, this is for you. We command those toxins to leave your body. Your body, there's something. Oh, there's something to do with um, with an enzyme that's not being produced. Right now, that we command the enzyme to be produced. 
reduce in Jesus' name. Robin said, I've had Ellis Danlos syndrome, that's connective tissue disorder, Kiedarabas and fibromyalgia, insomnia, anxiety, Shina, because Saudi Anamienta. Thank you, Lord. Listen, those toxins have to leave your body. There is something to do with magnesium and mercury, heavy metal somewhere. Um, that has literally affected your brain. Right now, we command a, a cleansing of your blood and of the cells of your body from heavy metal contamination in Jesus' name, from toxic. Have an enzyme it needs to break down. Um, enzyme issue. There is an enzyme deficiency right now. The Lord is healing that enzyme deficiency. Thank you, Lord. I speak life into your body. To leave, that pain to leave, those organs to function, intestine function right now. Thank you, Lord. Functions right now. Autism, leave right now. We command brain functionality to be returned to you. Children that don't speak to be verbal. We command new words to come to you every day. Thank you, Lord. There is a... There is an issue with the right quadrant, a right quadrant. I don't know whether this is in the heart or somewhere else in the body, but the right quadrant has um, a problem with it. It's been located on your, on your medical notes. Um, I see an outline of the body and the right quadrant is circled right there. We command healing into that area in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. A dystonia leave right now. Thank you, Lord. Dyspraxia, leave right now. Aortic stenosis, leave right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I speak over gracefully covered. We command those ovarian cysts to leave and your reproductive organs to function normally in Jesus' name. Robin says, um, silver toxins from dentistry, a cleansing of the blood from mercury. That's for you, Robin. That was for you. It's been cleansed out of your body. Somebody has no feeling really um, in from their knees down through their feet. Um, and I have see on your feet, you have to be very careful of ulcers and different things. Um, swelling, there's something to do with the circulation that gets down to your feet is poor and you don't have normal feeling in your feet. So like if you were to injure your feet, you wouldn't necessarily know that you'd stepped on something. Thing. Right now, I command circulation to be restored to every part of your body. Normal, healthy uh, uh, pain there in your body, um, healing in your body. Someone said, Crystal, I have right quadrant pain in my reports. That's you, Crystal. That's you. The Lord is healing you in that area. Right quadrant pain, go in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Circulation, yes, from the knees down to the feet and even to the fingertips. Right now, we command feeling nerves to be at rest, at peace. Thank you, full circulation. There's, um, there's a, really, I see a swell, swelling of the feet and the toes particularly and in the joints down there. Right now we command this fluid, there's fluid swollen, swelling in the ankles. In Jesus' name, we command that oedema to leave you. Kishina basuri anu. Right. Heart beating in Jesus' name. Yes, neuropathy and pots leave right now. That's you, Ken, right now. Look, uh, circulation. We command those varicose veins to leave you. We command circulation to come back to you in Jesus' name. We turn those food allergies off right now. We command over your intestine that you will eat any deadly thing and it shall not harm you. We command your intestines to function normally and not respond with inflammation and swelling to foods that you eat. Thank you, Lord. You know, we spoke this over our daughter, Hannah. She couldn't eat protein. She couldn't eat any food at all. That was, she was sent home from the hospital to die when she was three years old. She's 21 now. She's married with a baby, and her intestines function properly. Thank you, Lord. I believe it will be the same for you. Right now, Beverly, we just declare that pain in your sister's knees to leave in Jesus' name. Pain. You know, there's cartilage. Right now, we, we declare new cartilage to come back to you. New cartilage, thank you, Lord. Kishina basuri anami. There's a perforation that um, I'm seeing a perforation. Kishina basuri anami. Thank you, Lord. I think this is a perforation even in a stomach lining. Um, thank you, Lord. Right now we command those perforations to be sealed up. 
thin membrane and it's it's just perfect it's perforated where it shouldn't be right now it's letting things leak through and it shouldn't be we command those perforating holes to close up in jesus name amber yep ankle swelling leave right now swelling in the ankles go down in jesus name shin and pocosoria homeostasis in the body yes absolutely Perfect coordination in pelvic floor and natural bowel function. Amen. We agree with that in Jesus' name. Pain in the left arm. Leave now, Sarah. Yes, absolutely. Thank I just saw that one. I want to find it again. Where'd it go? Here it is. It says, um, this is from... Um, she never got sorry. And somebody I saw it goes healed of a hernia. Where did that go? Here we go. Lee, I was watching Healing Now at Caris Col uh, Bible College online, and Carly spoke out about hernia healing. She said to be sucked back into the body and healed, and I received it, and it's gone. Thank you, Lord. No problem for Jesus. It is gone. Michelle, right now, yep, my daughter had a similar thing. Right now, you know, I believe in the same way um, she received her healing, you're going to receive yours. We, can, we speak over those allergies and we turn them off in Jesus' name. We turn off those allergies right now in Jesus' name. Body, stop overreacting. Stop reacting inappropriately to substances, to food. All of these things are not for you to attack. Body, stop attacking food and digest it properly in Jesus' name. No more hives. I, I come against allergic reactions specifically to things like uh, peanuts and fish and tree nuts and, and bee stings. Right now, we take authority over those things in Jesus' eggs. Right now, we take authority over those food allergies and we say you're turned off in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Shina Bokosurian. Cat, right now we command your brain to connect properly and coordinate with every part of your body and your vision in the name of Jesus. Yes, Rebecca, we believe this for your Hannah too. We command those allergies to be switched off and those teeth holes, those are perforations in your teeth, to be filled in in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, the, the power of God is working in your body right now. It's working in your body. It's literally touching every cell. I want you to imagine like, like warm oil flowing down. If I was to stand over you with a jug of warm oil and just let it trickle from your head all the way down through your body, that's like the power of God right now running over you and it's touching every cell. It's going internally. It's going externally. There's, there's blockages that are being removed. There's hearing that's being switched on. There's ringing that's stopping. There's floaters dissolving. There's bones that are becoming strong. There's organs that are functioning right now in Jesus' name. Asthma and asthmatic relax, um, reactions. There's somebody that has brittle asthma. Right now the Lord is healing you. He's healing you. Somebody has um, uh, an idiopathic condition. It is written in your, in your, I'm seeing people's medical notes here. It says idiopathic, the cause is unknown. It's it may be part of your history, it is not part of your future. We command our senses to be heightened, smell and taste to be switched back on in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Somebody has a problem with swallowing due to an enlarged tongue and tonsils, enlarged a swelling on the inside of your, your, um, your ear, nose and throat right there, your adenoids as well. It's causing snoring right now. That problem is in causing an issue with snoring and swallowing and sleep acne. Right now, in Jesus' name, we command those, those, those soft tissues, the swelling to go down in Jesus' name. Adenoids, tonsils, the tongue go back to normal size. We command this infection to leave your body in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I take authority over dementia in the brain. Right now, we command regeneration of the brain cells. We command seizures to stop. And, and um, even on an MRI scan, I see someone having an MRI scan, and they're going to be like, I see them saying the, the phrase, what's the matter? 
what's the matter? And they're talking about the brain matter. Things where they've seen a shrinkage in the brain matter, they're going to see an, an expansion again. It's almost like the brain is growing. It's growing new things. You, they're going to look back and they're going to see where they saw shadows before. They're going to see healthy white new brain matter in, gen, in Jesus' name. Right now, we, com, we command that, that, that regeneration of brain matter. Thank you, Lord. What's the matter? New brain matter. That's what the matter is. Thank you, Lord. Kashina Basuri Anamienta. Thank you, Lord, that your power is flowing through us. That He's given life to all of our flesh, life to our bones, life to our veins, life to our nerves. In Jesus' name. Somebody, you have veins that are compressed in the body. And you have very, um, I don't know how to say this, but your skin is like elastic. You're very elastic. Your, your joints, your veins, um, your actual skin, like is very elastic. It's a condition that you're suffering with. Right now, we command that condition to leave your body. We set out right everything that was once wrong. We set out right everything that was once wrong in Jesus' name. We command genetic defects to leave. There's, there's malformed organs, people with mismatched organs where one, one organ is smaller than the other. Somebody has a withered kidney. Right now, the Lord... Only one lung. Right now, we command that other lung to grow back, to grow, to be formed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Kashina Basuri Anamienda. Somebody has Hashimoto's disease. The Lord is healing you of that. Hashimoto's disease. Be gone in Jesus' name. Plastic skin, joints, and veins. Well, there you go. That was for you. Right now, we speak healing over your body, Robin, uh, Robin Lee. We command those aneurysms to be uh, dissolved. No problem. No problem. Somebody's having problems with their blood, their blood clotting. You have sticky blood, um, thick blood. Right now, we command your blood to thin out and stop clotting and stop getting stuck in places. We command your blood to flow in Jesus' name. Angelica says you, that you have Hashimoto's. That healing power is for you, Angelica. We cancel that diagnosis in to leave his body. I had juvenile arthritis as well, but I don't have it anymore. Right now, I'm telling you, the Lord is healing your Isaac in Jesus' name. We command those joints not to swell. We command that um, arthritic process to repent in Jesus' name and every joint in his body to move and to bend and to stretch as it was created to be in Jesus' name. Colleen, right now, I take authority over that pain in your knees and your hips and I command it to go now. Go now. Pain, leave Colleen's body. In Jesus' name. Colleen, don't be afraid of the pain. Don't be afraid of it. You remind it where it came from and remind it where to go. In the name of Jesus. Go back to the pit of hell where you came from. Thank you, Lord. I command that hearing to be switched back on, Kavita. Switch back on. Thank you, Lord. She, you know, those floaters to dissolve, those, those cataracts to dissolve, those our optic nerve to come back to, into life, uh, Janine. Come back into life and eyes to open, eyes to see in Jesus' name. Sheena Pokosur, Iona, right now we command that stabbing sensation to leave you. Go in the name of Jesus. Amen. Abilities coming back to walk and to move. She'd had some, some kind of problem where she literally was in traction. Nine-year-old daughter, completely, God has healed her. She's able to move again. Thank you, Lord. Kashina Basuri. Amen. You know what? Listen, anxiety, insomnia, fibromyalgia, IBS, hiatus, hernia. You know, I think I've probably touched on all of these things right now, Tina. All of these things have been in these words of knowledge. They're all for you. They're all for you. They belong to you. Yeah, Kavita, that's right. Cysts have to leave. Cysts everywhere in the body have to leave. In Jesus' name. Sheena Basuri. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yep, absolutely. Missing teeth, they can grow back. Not a problem. Things that have, that have been uh, there, they, they just need to go. They just need to go. They, we, you know, things that have been missing or have been taken from you can come back. 
Thank you. Somebody has an, an issue of a blood supply to um, the organs of their body. It's particularly a blood supply issue. Blood is not getting, is not nourishing the cells in in, an, in particular organs as they should. Lord is is repairing, restoring, even down to bits of your DNA that are missing. Somebody has a very small section of DNA missing. The Lord is creating that for you. It's a creative miracle. You don't you have the DNA of Jesus in your body. We 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 demand it right now in Jesus name. Thank you Lord. Kira basuri anamienta. There is somebody you have a problem with your thumb joint. Um, the Lord is healing you in your thumb joint, particularly. Thank you, Lord. There, there's a movement. There's there's something going on there. The Lord's healing a thumb joint. There's deficiencies that are being healed. Thank you, Lord. You know, the Lord says, "Am I not sufficient for you? Am I enough? Yes, He's sufficient." He means if he's sufficient, that you're sufficient. You have no insufficiency. You have no deficiency. Right now, we command deficiencies, weaknesses to repent in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Now, I want you to do something. I want you to check yourself. I want you to, to bend, to stretch, to move, to do something that you couldn't do before. Now, I've spoken to pretty much everything in the body through the words of knowledge. Thank you, Lord. And if there's something that you couldn't do, something that hurt, something that, that you couldn't, that you had no control over before, do something. Move towards the word. We need to respond. Amen. To respond to the words that have been spoken um, here through, the, through the Spirit of God today. So I want to encourage you to bend, to stretch, to do something, to check your body out. Look and see. You know, as the lepers went, they were healed. As the man with the withered arm stretched out his arm, did something that he couldn't do before, he found out he could do it. As the leper went to stand, he found out that he had strength in his ankles again. Do something that maybe you couldn't do before. Check, see if something that was cold is warm again. See, check, see if you can see without your, your glasses. Check, see if you can hear without your hearing aids. Move, bend, stretch, swallow. And Barbara says, my left jaw feels better. Right now, we command that bit of clicking to leave in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amber says, that was, that was her in the thumb joint. The Lord's healing your thumb joint, Amber. That's, see, even the smallest thing he cares about. Seth says a daughter's breathing is better. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Your healing power is flowing through their, their bodies. Everyone that hears the sound of my voice right now, whether you're listening to it, whether you're watching it, whether you're on the replay, let me tell you, these words have no expiration. Wherever you, whenever the moment that you heard them, they were for you. The Lord has laid this up in time to come for people that need it. He's already sent his word to heal you before you even needed to hear it. The Lord has already heard you. He's already paid for it for you. The supply, there's no problem with the supply. Amen. He's already working in your body. Someone needs to put that in the comments. The power of God is working in me. The power of God is working in my body. The power of God is working in my heart. The power of God is working in my autoimmune system. Then when you put in it, whatever it works for you, the power of God is working in. And then you put that area where it needs. For you, the power of God is working in your body, Deborah. The power of God is working in your body, Rebecca. SS, the power of God is working in your organs, in pat in your husband's body, in your body. The power of God is working in you. Thank you, Lord. Somebody says they've, they've got feeling back where they haven't had feeling for a long time. Thank you, Lord. Kishina Basori, right, right ear is totally open now. That's you, Jan. The power of God worked in your ear. It's working in your back, John. That pain is leaving. The power of God is working in your body. Every single part. Yes, and the people that you're believing for, in your digestive system, in your joints. Thank you, Lord. Kishina Basori. That's because it's, you know, the healing power of God is real. It is for you today. When we broke through that fear, it released faith. Thank you, Lord. Okay, the blockage has been removed. I hear this phrase, the blockage has been removed. Thank you, Lord. Where there was a where there was a where there was a, there was a stop, there was a stop somewhere. Now the blockage has been removed. Thank you, Lord. Okay, the power of God is working in your body. It's working in your body. Fernanda, pain is leaving your body.
you. Thank you, Lord. God, you are so good. Lord, we receive it. We receive it. Yes, restoration. We receive it. Thank you, Lord. Every organ connected, functioning as it as it was created to be in Jesus. Name. Somebody's getting a, a hole in their tooth filled in. You thought you were going to have to have a root thing done right now, but the Lord has given you a new root, a new healthy root. Then Constance says the pain is gone in my lower abdomen. Amen. Come on, check yourself. Put If you see a difference, put it right there in the comments. We want to give the Lord the glory for what he's doing. He's working in you. Blood clots being removed. Amen. It's finished, Kathleen. That's right. It's finished. Thank you, Lord. He's so good. Sometimes all that's left to do is praise him. Thank you, Lord. You're good. Your power is working on the inside of us. Yep, power of God's working for proper heart and lung function. Yeah, thank you. There is some sort of distortion, a visual distortion that the Lord is healing right now in in somebody's eyesight. Um, You don't have any depth perception. Right now, the Lord's restoring that to you, to where you can see near and far, you can see in 3D. Depth perception is being restored to you and visual distortion is leaving. Thank you, Lord. That's right. People are having feeling come into places, working in parts of your bodies you haven't felt before. Thank you, Lord. Kunsa, right now we command that pain to leave, pain to leave in Jesus' name and bleeding to stop. Thank you, Lord. We command that pinched nerve to leave. Oh, look, pinched nerve in my left leg has healed. You're healed. Thank you, Lord. Kashina Basurian. That right, lungs, I tell you, respiratory failure is not going to wake you up in the night, Sarah. I believe you've received. It doesn't have any place over you anymore. You're going to sleep through without waking up. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, Rebecca says the neck is feeling better. That, you know, the Word of God is working in you. Working in you. Thank you, Lord. All aches and pains leaving. And we want you to keep putting your testimonies, keep checking your body, keep trying. You know, some, some people sometimes need to, to bend over, touch their toes or, or move their arms or, or, or do something. And that binocular vision disorder has to go. That's right, Katie, that was for you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We receive new sight in Jesus' name. That's right. Always a piece of cake for Jesus. You know, these things, when we understand that Jesus already paid for it, for us to have it, and all we need to, is to do is to, is to get on, you know, in agreement with it and speak it out, I'm telling you, the, the power, we, we release the power. We walk around with Jesus, the healer on the inside of us. There's plenty of power in there, more than enough for everything that might ail you. Amen. So when we speak it, we release it. When we remember, it's like what I said. Don't worry. It's just the devil. It's just a demon. It's just the enemy trying to make me sick. Is that all you've got? I don't believe in you. I doubt you symptoms. I don't believe in you. Kishin, right? Belly button to go back in. No problem. Belly button, go back in, in Jesus' name. There you go. Right? No problem. No problem for Jesus. He's so good to us. Listen, if you have not registered for the cure, you need to make sure you register for the cure. You need to make sure you register, you attend, or you watch online. It's going to be phenomenal. Amen. We just have a little taste here. And we, we want you to keep putting your testimonies in there, keep sharing it. Amen. And remember, if you've just joined us late, I'm giving away a copy here of Fearless. So if you'd like to get a signed copy of Fearless, we're going to pick somebody that shares this um, live stream. Press share. If you're on Facebook right now, share this 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 broadcast right now on Facebook. Like and subscribe if you're on YouTube and then put in the comments that you've shared it. Amen. And we will pick somebody and we'll get that sent out to them. But the winner is Michaela. Michaela from uh, North, uh, from where was it? North California. You're going to be the winner of, uh, you were the winner of last week's giveaway for this book. We're going to get that sent out to you, Michaela. And so congratulations. I mean, there's a links on there right there for you to, to register for the cure. You've registered virtually. That's awesome. We're looking forward to seeing many of you there in person. Hundreds of people have already uh, have already um, registered. Blood vessel disorder, little boys' testicles called var- variocele. Amen. We command that blood flow to be restored in your in your son, your little boy, in Jesus' name. No problem. There's the organs that are being reconnected. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Listen, God is so good. I, I can't end this broadcast without saying thank you to our partners, our partners and friends. You make these broadcasts possible. And we want to thank you partners and friends also for, for making the cure possible. 
And then when is the cure coming to Canada? Actually, that would be a really fun trip. We should do that. We should do that at some point. I want, we want to go everywhere. Um, but we have got lots of things coming up, lots of things coming up. But I do want to say this. If you, if you are stirred up by um, Teradiz Ministries, if you're stirred up by the things that you see our ministry doing and you know that God is moving on you to become a part of what we're doing and be connected, I want to encourage you to think about becoming a partner. We pray for, for our partners every day and we get testimonies from our partners actually all the time. We just had a couple of um, Zoom calls with our partners. Every quarter we do Zoom calls with our partners and uh, you know, we get to see them face to face. We get to, to pray for them, amen, and speak over them. Um, and that's for our partners. So if you'd like to be connected to um, Terry Days Ministries, in become a partner. Um, you can do that. The team has a link. It's really super easy. You can sign up to become a partner. And um, we're gonna, we, we want to get to know you better. Amen. And we want to speak into your life in a very personal way and um, that, that we do with our partners who have expressed a desire to be connected with us. Amen. So partner with us there at terriades.com. I'm believing um, for um, at least 50 new partners. And so um, maybe, yeah, maybe you can be one of those. Amen. 50 new partners is what is, uh, the Lord has put in my heart to believe for immediately. So um, you can also do that if you need if you prayer or if you, if you want to partner over the phone as well, you can do that on our US phone line, 719-633-44. Amen. And so, uh, oh, that's awesome. Christina says, partnering with Territories Ministries is the best decision I've ever made. Oh, we love you. We hope to see you again some, somewhere in Florida, probably where, you, where you're at. Amen. But um, sorry, so the ministry has been a blessing. Sorry I missed your last Zoom. Listen, we're going we're gonna to have more of them for partners. I'm talking to partners now. We're going to try and have partner Zooms every quarter. So if you miss one, you can join in. And um, we love to see you do these Zooms because we get to see you face to face. And that's just such a super blessing. Also for partners, we have boot camp coming up. Boot camp. You don't want to miss boot camp. Boot camp is our small groups. They are run by Zoom as well. And they are once a week in groups of 12 people. And really, we help you to take the word of God, to learn, to learn how to teach, to learn how to pray for people, um, to read the Bible together, to make friends all around the world. They happen by Zoom one hour a week for 12 weeks. They are really are valuable um, empowerment groups. And they are completely free uh, for our partners. And they, it's called boot camp. So if you would like to be a part of the next round of boot camp, it's beginning on June the 1st. You can also do that um, through the links that the team will put up there. Um, and you can phone up and they'll give you information or you can look on our website. There we are, the team. So good. Look, they put a link up there, terrydays.com forward slash boot camp. You do need to put in an application. In. As I, I like to take these testimonies and then um, and then read them out and encourage people with them. Yep, oh, Andrew says, mention the underground. Yep, you know what? We've got so many things going on in this ministry. Sometimes it's hard to keep a track of. Underground is actually, Stephanie's a big fan of boot camp. Underground is a big fan. It, underground's a big fan. Underground is our own social media platform. Runs a little bit by Facebook, but it's only believers that are connected with our ministry. And so if you ever have a prayer request or you just want to be encouraged and meet new friends and meet other believers, it's kind of like our Christian version of um, Facebook or something. And it's safe because we don't like give your information to the Chinese or anything. You know, we're not selling your information anywhere. But that is called underground. And um, the team, team, I'm sure they'll put, un people are like, underground is great. There we go. Look, I don't even have to ask for it. They just know. Put, they put the link up at underground.terrides.com. And so you can meet like-minded believers on that network. And um, it's a great place to receive prayer as well. And, um, and at our boot camp groups, our small, group, uh, our small groups, you'll find information on Underground about our small groups as well. So it's really, it's actually a really cool place to find out things that are going on in the ministry and be part of the Terrides family. You know, when you join up for these things, when you partner, when you become a part of Underground, when you do boot camp, you really are joining a family. This is the Terrides family. Amen. So, um, so, so join the family. We want, we want to grow. We want to, we want our family to enlarge. We'd love to have you um, partner with us and be a part of all of those things and uh, to see you there in some of those Zooms, some of those uh, classes. Amen. We love you. As always, we love you. Ashley gives his, his, his love to you as well. I send greetings from him. Um, Tuesdays, remember on Tuesdays, he does his Supernatural uh, Business live stream. So make sure if business is your thing, 
or you just believe in God for, for uh, finances, make sure you join, join him on Tuesdays as well. And then oftentimes, uh, usually around once a month, we do um, a Sunday night home group. So we have lots of things going on, lots of different things going on. Amen. But all of this information you'll find on our website. It's really, um, really uh, full of good information, lots of free stuff to encourage you. And thank you again for joining me this week and just sharing. I always feel that, that power hours are just really special. I love, I love, it's such a privilege to get to be a part of your healing journey, your story of breakthrough, amen. And remember, fear doesn't need to have a hold over you. It doesn't need to be a part of your future. It may be a part of your history. It doesn't need to be a part of your future. Amen. So take the principles, go back, watch the replay, take the principles and the scriptures that we shared together today and start speaking words of faith over your life. And I tell you that the enemy has no chance. He is going to regret the day he messed with you. That fear has to leave in Jesus name. Amen. I love you and I'll see you again real soon.